Well, hello and welcome to worship here at Newtown Congregational Church for this September 18th, 2022. We're glad you're here with us worshiping online. And I'm Reverend Matt Kremen, and I'm looking forward to spending a little bit of time with you as we ponder together what it means to be people of the humongous wow. What it means to be people of reverence, of celebration, of entering into our relationship with God first and foremost as a people who are sustained by this infinite reality that is beyond our comprehension and yet invites us into an intimacy, a connection that is beyond words itself. We're going to be exploring that a little bit later in our service, but I have a couple of announcements for us today. The first announcement is that we are receiving a special offering once again this Sunday uh, through our United Church of Christ denomination. And uh, that is one of the uh, several special offerings that we have on a yearly basis and um, that supports important ministry. And this is for um, strengthening the church and it, uh, the monies for this collection go to support local churches. Uh, half of the money actually remains right here in our own conference and supports local churches and also supports uh, local ministries, uh, particularly uh, ministers, some of whom are just starting out um, and providing training and other things and other, other ways that support leadership, but then also support special programs that enable churches to, um, to find um, vital ministries that are making a difference. And the rest of the money goes to churches across our denomination within the United States, you know, Church of Christ. So your offering makes a difference. You'll, you'll see a little bit more about that later in our service, but if you choose to support it, uh, it's a wonderful cause for our uh, fellow uh, sibling churches in the United Church of Christ. Uh, the other announcements that we have is that uh, we have begun our fall programming. We know you're watching us online, but if you're also going to join us in person, you'll want to know that we have opportunities for children um, of all ages, but particularly for our children uh, through from starting with uh, preschool age and uh, infants all the way up through our elementary and middle school children. We have a nurture program that's, uh, that's taking place each Sunday that is available during our um, <clears throat> both during our 10 a.m. worship, and then on occasion we'll be having our special Wellspring uh, gathering, which will be happening today, uh, a little bit later on Sunday, after our 10 a.m. service at 11, 15 a.m. in our great room. And that Wellspring is going to be taking place each month as a means for all of us to gather together and consider the theme for that month and engage each other and have fun and interactive, both worship, music, and um just just a good time, hopefully, for all of us, uh, e even as we ponder and, and celebrate and, and uh, discover these great themes of our faith uh, that can nourish and sustain us and help us to, to be people of faith throughout our lives. We also want to remind you that we have all kinds of announcements that are about events that are going to be happening in our congregation upcoming. We hope that you will look at uh, your emails and uh, check out our church website so you can find out more about what is happening in our congregation. But for now, let us continue with our worship. Spirit of God in the clear running water, blowing to greatness the trees on the hill. Spirit of God in the finger of morning, fill the earth, bring it to birth and blow where you will. Blow. But breath of the Spirit blowing in me. Down in the meadow the willows are moaning, Sheep in the pasture and cannot lie still. Spirit of God, create. 
creation is groaning, fill the earth, bring it to birth and blow where you will. Blow, blow, blow till I be but breath of the Spirit blowing in me. I saw the scar of the year that lay dying, heard the lament of the lone whippoorwill. Spirit of God, see the crowd crying, fill the earth, bring it to birth and blow where you will. Blow, blow, blow till I be but breath of the Spirit blowing in me. Spirit of God, everyone's heart is lonely, watching and waiting, hungry and still. Spirit of God, we long that you only fill the earth, bring it to birth and blow where you will. Blow, blow, blow till I be but breath of the Spirit blowing in me. In just a little bit, we're going to be hearing the words of the psalmist who says, you know, who are we human beings that you are mindful of us? Looking at this vast universe, at the stars and the moon and celestial bodies, as well as uh, the creation itself, the psalmist is overwhelmed by this sense that in this vast, vast, for him and for the ancient uh, an unknowable world that, that still, even as much as we know, is so uh, much greater and bigger than than we can even imagine. Uh, and says, you know, who is it you're mindful of? Us? And yet you you count us, you love us, and, and you make us a, a partner with you, a part of this uh, incredible thing that you are about. Um, and so it's a celebration of both the awe and reverence, but a celebration of also uh, finding humility in the midst of that uh, and, and helping us to 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 balance our humility with uh, reverence and with uh, the calling of God to be a part of what God is about. And that, of course, is really what praying is. Praying is the act of practicing humility as we practice reverence as well. Practicing humility for ourselves, of knowing that we're, we're, we're not in control of everything, but also knowing that this God who is a part of us and is a part of all things and a God who is so much greater than anything we can ever imagine. That God cares deeply about what is happening in our world, in our lives. That God moves in and through us. And that God sustains us. And so in prayer, we open ourselves to connection to God. We acknowledge intentionally how God is a part of our lives. And so in that spirit, let us continue in prayer. Glorious God, you are utterly beyond us in every way. Yet you involve your holy self with our very human existence and commitments. And we give you thanks and praise for your unending love for each one of us. You have nurtured and blessed each of us as we have grown in the womb of your love and compassion over the years. And we give thanks for the trust in you that has grown in us and has developed us and allowed us to reach maturity. We praise for you for the vastness of your universe and creation and for your many blessings to us. We give you thanks that you trust us enough to share your thoughts with our limited minds and hearts. That there is a spark of your holy life that enriches us and blesses us even when we are not aware of it so that we always have an inner yearning to be near to you, to be blessed by you, to discover more about you and all of your creation. On this day, we pray especially for those who are ill in body or mind or spirit, for those who are grieving, 
for those who are facing their own mortality, for all who are living in the midst of violence and for, for those who are fleeing upheaval and destruction, for those living in the midst of disasters near and far. Hear our prayers that we offer to you on this day for all who seek comfort and assurance and strength for their journeys. And we pray for, uh, for ourselves that we might be people who bear the marks of your love and compassion and transformation. Bearer of all creation, in your power, in your majesty, in your infinite love, you have ordained that your eternal presence is with each one of us at all times, so that in the morning you are there with us, and in the evening and at night you are still with us. God, you honor us with your presence, and you overwhelm us with your grace. Receive these our prayers in the name and spirit of Christ, the one who came that we might behold that infinite grace and love in flesh and bone, and the one who taught us to pray always, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Strength in the Church is a special mission offering focusing on local congregations and the Church Universal. God calls each generation to make the Church their own. You can help tell the story of the Church through your generous gifts. 50% of Strength in the Church gifts stay right in your conference. The other half empowers ministry across the denomination. It plants churches and ministries, supports ministers in their work today, and equips new leaders for the future Church. Will you vision with us and with God about what church can be? Will you donate to strengthen the church? On behalf of the United Church of Christ, yesterday, today, and tomorrow, thank you for your generosity. Scripture reading for today is Psalm number eight. It is a psalm of praise. It is a psalm of reverence and awe, but also a psalm of, of in the midst of 
having awe for God, a reminder in our own humility of how we are entrusted with so much by God. We are given this beautiful gift of, of power and possibility in our own lives, but they're, they're intermingled. Ah, to be awed by God is also to be a partner with God. And, uh, and so the psalmist says it like this and, and speaks of the heavens and the moons and the, and the moon and the, you know, all these things that, that, that then remind us in ways of how we are in the vastness of this great universe where we might be seen as nothing. We, we are so important and significant to God still. So we're going to hear the psalm made and then talk a little bit about it. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them? Mortals that you care for them. Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands and you have put all things under their feet. All sheep and oxen and all the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Here ends our reading. May God add understanding to these God's holy words. Okay. Our theme this month has been wow. And we are reading a book uh, in, as a congregation, encouraging anybody who wants to in our congregation to read the book uh, by Anne Lamott. It's uh, called Help, Thanks, Wow. Uh, and she talks about these being the essences of the three essential prayers that we have. Prayers of, for help, prayers of thanksgiving, if you will, and prayers of wow. And while she ends with wow, we're starting with wow because I'm of the opinion that, that wow is actually the way we enter into then um, this life of relationship with God that both where we seek in times of, of help and of needing and, and articulating our brokenness and our fears and everything else that still is in a relationship with this reverence that is that is at the core of who we are uh, as well as then our thanksgiving of course um, uh, being a similar uh, response to this reverence that is a part of our lives but the challenge for us as human beings sometimes is that we are not the same kind of wow people maybe as the ancients were, as maybe even the psalmist was. We read the psalms and we kind of say, oh, that's nice. Yeah, we'll be a little wow on Sundays, you know, maybe for an hour or, or so in worship. But, you know, the rest of the week, I don't know, maybe every now and again we'll see a beautiful sunset or we'll see this or that. We might have a little, in, in, in the essence of wow. Um, but wows are kind of things that sneak up on us these days. And I think the ancients had an experience of reverence, of, of wow, if you not, not if you will, not just moments of wow, but, but really their lives grounded in wow. Like, like the psalmist says here, you know, it says, Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above in the heavens. The psalmist, like many, would look up at the stars and say, look how glorious that is. And every moment, if, and if, of course, in the ancient days, you didn't have all these... Uh, artificial lights in cities, right? And, and so when it got dark, it got dark. And when, when, the, when you looked at the stars, they, you saw the stars, right? And you saw the moon. And the, and, you know, there, there was this power to this. And of course, we kind of think, oh yeah, well, they didn't, you know, they didn't know how far the moon was. We, we went to the moon now. We've landed on the moon. Yeah, maybe we're going back to the moon. That's the hope if we can ever get our, NASA can get it, it, its rocket ready to go and test it out and do all that stuff. Maybe we'll go back to the moon. Maybe we'll get to Mars. You know, something. You know, and something. Oh yeah, with stars, we you know we have this. And, yeah, you know what is that? But but the psalmist goes on in the third verse. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them? Mortals that you care for? This is the wow. Well, who are we? You know, the psalmist in the ancient days is articulating this idea that in this reverence that is there for 
this creation that is that is visible uh, and, and not fully understood um, that there is this palpable wow that overwhelms and yet as it says who are you mindful as and yet Psalm says, you have set us above. The, you have made us, in essence, you know, partners. We're, we're like a little less than God. We're like, well, we, we, we're not you. You are so vast. Me. And yet you've given us all this dominion. We, we're in charge of in names with domestic animals and, and birds and fish. You know, things that, if you think about, the, even in the ancient days, this d domestication of many animals and being able to catch fish and, and even, you know, uh, hunt birds and you know, that there's this way in which for the ancients, even while they were, you know, didn't go out on the ocean really far or didn't do a bunch of things because there was trepidation around the lots of the earth, there was this way in which human beings um, were given and trusted this, this holy responsibility, this partnership responsibility with God to have dominion over things. Uh, and yet we kind of lose track of that. We, I mean, we have this sense of, yeah, maybe that. Oh, yeah, well, God's put us in charge, and we're just in charge, and God's not, my, you know, mind your own business, God, because we're in charge now. And maybe every now and again we'll, we'll connect with you on a, on a Sunday uh, for an hour. But, you know, for the rest of our lives, you know, with this. And, and maybe we get more of this idea of God as my personal God who's taking care of me. But this idea that God is in and beyond all things, right? God, this transcendent reality of God is, is sometimes really challenging for us to wrap our heads around today. In some ways, while we've gained more and more knowledge, we sometimes think we, we know so much. Uh, and that humility that is a part of reverence is lost. Do you know, for instance, uh, the magnitude of just the Milky Way galaxy of which we are part? Uh, it actually boggles the mind. And sometimes we don't pause for this, but think about this. If one were to scale down, for instance, our own solar system, just our solar system right now, so that the sun was the size of a tennis ball, you know, a tennis ball about, okay. Uh, the earth would be the size of a grain of sand and it would have to be 27 feet away. Sun, tennis ball, grain of sand, 27 feet away, earth. The next nearest star to the sun would be more than 1,400 miles away from that tennis ball on that scale. That's how far the universe is. And the Milky Way itself is 100,000 light years across. And it is only one of billions of galaxies, each containing billions of stars. This universe is a big deal, folks. It's a big wow. And the psalmist can sense that. The psalmist doesn't have our scientific knowledge some you know, several thousand years later, but the psalmist can articulate the magnitude, the wonder of a solar system that sometimes we don't pay much attention to. But we are part of that solar system, that vastness. And so when people talk about God, if God is in and beyond all of that, we're not talking about just this little local deity that, you know, even in the ancient days, they had kind of local deity. Oh, that local deity, he kind of hangs out in this little region of the country, right? No, the psalmist was articulating that the God that the Hebrew people were worshiping, the God that then we as Christians connect to and claim as our own, this is not a kind of a local God that's like, well, yeah, that God hangs out in our church or, or hang, hangs out only here. That God is intimate. And we'll talk more about that next week. But this God is beyond all things as well, in and beyond, is at least as big as the all that is in every universe, all that ever is. And that's big. That, that, is, that is beyond our comprehension to get in our heads. But, and so we might say, oh yeah, so who are we? Like, just like the song, who are we? They're mindful. And yet you've made us partners in this part of the world, in this earth that we are on, in this little blue ball. We're, we're partners. We're just a little bit below the gods, if you will. Um, not, the, not just the big god, but, but the ability that, that we have to, to manage and manipulate, control things in our 
world. The problem is that sometimes we manage to control and manipulate things in our own little world. We think we are God. And to have awe and reverence is to let go of that. But then also that means we're connected. So sometimes we might, the, the challenge of this is sometimes we go, oh, well, then what am I going to do? I mean, I'm not, boy, to be a part of this universe, that makes me so tiny. So I'm insignificant and don't matter. And yet to be a part of this universe, we're, we're one with it. We're one with God. Even while God is beyond us, we are one with God. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, you know, uh, likes to art, uh, try and articulate and explain particularly the, the physical sciences and astrophysics sciences um, to folks, tries to be in conversation about these kind of things. He has this great thing that he, he said once. He said, recognize that the very molecules that make up your body, that's you, me, your body, the molecules that make up your body, the atoms that construct the molecules are traceable to the crucibles that were once the centers of high mass stars that exploded their chemically rich guts into the galaxy, enriching pristine gas clouds with the chemistry of life so that we are all connected to each other biologically, to the earth chemically, and to the rest of the universe atomically. That's kind of cool. That makes me smile. I actually feel quite large at the end of that. It's not that we are better than the universe. We are part of the universe. We are in the universe, and the universe is in us. Now, he's talking about science here, right? And he's, but he's talking about this connection, and I think this is a theological statement, even as it is a science statement. Sometimes we say, oh, science and... Religion, they don't mix, but very often, sometimes they actually do express very similar acts of awe, of reverence. Awe at the vastness, but reverence also for the connection we have with all that is and ever was. We are part of that. You and me. Amazing stuff. And that's the thing, if we're going to try and figure out God, for instance, and talk about God, so often people are, are talking about God and they've lost the sense of, wow. I mean, we shouldn't say, like, don't talk about God. God's too big and we don't even say anything about God. Don't think, no, we shouldn't do that. But also we shouldn't get this idea that God is, is, this, is this reality that we can control and get around. Uh, Rob Bell says, like, he says, the moment God is figured out in nice, neat lines and definitions, we are no longer dealing with God. That's the challenge, because very often in our world sometimes, even for people of faith, because we've gotten lost track of the wow, uh, we then, certain religious folks say, this is what God is, this is how God behaves, this is how and God, and this is my God, and this is, this is the God, and I have these nice fixed lines about what God is. I can tell it to you. Man, no. God is bigger than all it is. Nothing's going to contain God. Nothing we can conceive of in our heads can and then when we have that, I think we have this wonderful um, reverence that can take place. That reverence is articulated, I think, great by a quote by uh, Madeline Langle. Uh, she says it like this, I am in awe of the maker of galaxies and geese, stars and starfish, mercury and men and women. Sometimes it is rapturous awe. Sometimes it is uh, numinous dread Jacob felt. Sometimes it is the humble awe of knowing that ultimately I belong to God, the maker whose thumbprint is on each one of us. And that is a blessing. You are part of God. If God is in everything. If God is in every star, every molecule that ever has been and ever will be in this universe, means God is in you. You are part of the same substance, the creative reality of God. Wow. That's why we say this is a humongous wow. Wow. Rob Bell goes on with this. I'll, I'll end with this uh, in our message today. Rob Bell has this great little saying. He says, are you breathing? Are you breathing? Are you here? Did you just take a breath? Are you about to take another? Do you have a habit of regularly doing this? Gift, gift, gift. 
whatever else has happened in your life, failure, pain, heartache, abuse, loss, the first thing that can be said about you is that you have received a gift. Often. That's why we begin with, wow. Doesn't mean there's not heartache or pain or abuse or loss or struggle. Doesn't mean there's all this other stuff happening in the world and that we ignore it. But what we start with so that then we can face it in our humility, but also in support of and feeling the support of the one who is in us, who has gifted us with breath, breath, breath. That is it. We have received this gift. Friends, we are a part of something so vast, so special. We, science tells us we're intimately connected with it. Our molecules, our atoms are, are there. And even when we die, those atoms will remain. You know, science tells us that. What we say is that, yes, we remain because God is in all things and beyond all things and within us and beyond us. And we are in God. Wow. Wow. So I send us off on this day. I send you off from this little gathering of online worship, hoping that you can look at the world, maybe with just a little fresher eyes of wow. Prayers of wow for every moment you're given. And I say this benediction to you now unto the one who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of all glory with great joy. To the only God, our creator, through Jesus Christ, our savior, and through the Holy Spirit, our redeemer, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time beyond all time, now and forever. Amen.